the fight for compensation for locals affected by a tidal wave of forestry debris is set to ramp up as all the companies charged by the Gisborne District Council say they're not guilty. A million tonnes of loose logs wrecked homes and was left strewn on roads, properties and beaches after two bouts of heavy rain last June. Tolaga Bay was the worst hit and locals who are still cleaning up the mess eight months later fear it will keep happening unless drastic changes are made to the industry, a Noosha Bradley reports. In June last year, unprecedented heavy rain in the Tolaga catchment washed tonnes of forestry debris from the hills onto the flats. The slash, as it's called, created dams exacerbating the flooding that followed. On Mike Parker's Tolaga Bay farm, they're still cleaning up the damage. The, the speed of the water has pushed fences over and gates don't swing properly and and you have sort of culverts blowing out and silt and drains, we have to clean out tile drains, get a, a machine in to do that, so it's been pretty lengthy and, ex and an expensive process. Tolaga Bay Beach was supposed to have been cleared by three companies operating in the area by Christmas, but it's still littered with logs. We're very unhappy actually, and I think all, all the locals are too, I've talked to quite a few and they're pretty upset, they left a big pile in the middle of the beach, it's been half burnt and um, people have said that they should have taken the logs away and dumped them back in their own land and cleaned the beach up and we hear that the, the visitor numbers have been right down so it's impacting on the community, the shops and people that you know, get summertime jobs. Every time it rains, more slash is brought downstream and locals fear what might happen in another big storm event. Alison Waru from the local iwi is coordinating the beach cleanup. She says a fire ban means the remaining logs won't be burnt until August and that's if no more wash up. She says forestry employs a lot of locals and the iwi want to educate workers and companies, as well as the council, on ways to prevent such damage happening again. We don't want, I don't want to leave this mess for my mokopuna, so we have to take, put steps in place now so that 10 years, 15 years down the future, they're not dealing with this thing again. So it's a real long, long view, and that's what Uawanui um, is about, is that 100-year look at things, not just from June to here. Sean Mitchell, who lost everything, including his home in the June flood, has worked in forestry for 25 years. He says installing more slash traps in plantations and in rivers upstream could be easily done now to reduce the risk. Definitely ain't going to stop the slash from coming off the hills, but try and retain it within their estate. You know, if it means, you know, so there might have to be some variations for consents to be able to service the waterways. Um, you know, tracking along them so that you can have slash catchers that are try and catch them in smaller quantities. You know, that's that's my opinion. Then just using a, a council bridge to catch it all because that's pretty much what the bridge has become. It's just become a, a giant slash catcher. None of the forestry companies would talk to RNZ about what measures they're taking to prevent more slash damage. And the Eastland Wood Council, who represents them, also refused to talk unless a positive story was told about the industry. All 10 companies will reappear in Gisborne District Court in August. Tolaga farmer Mike Parker says he's waiting to see what happens with this case before he and other affected farmers consider launching their own legal action against the forestry companies. In Gisborne for Checkpoint, Anusha Bradley.